let you in on an aspect of the world that you're uh, not normally accustomed to. I could have been a totally different person. Yeah, right now. Since 12 hours ago. Could have been wearing a business suit today. Who knows? <laughs> With a fanny pack. With a fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> Just classing up the joint. That's a fantastic idea. It's the only kind of ideas I have, sir. It's Corner House Chronicles Day. It's just different enough. And here's the kicker, boss. They're all the same personality. <laughs> <laughs> They're assholes. Yeah. yeah. Just, just 1.5 million <laughs> asshole penguins. <laughs> Best part. I'm going to try and pace it out, so just as you forget about me, I'll just pop in and remind you. Hello again, everyone. My name is John. I'm Jason. And we are the Corner House Chronicles. Bam. We would like to welcome you into episode 55. Also known as season two. Season two. Episode one. But technically it's episode 55 because we like to continue the number thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We, we should I think so. Go. That way when we hit 100, it'll be like. It'll be know, a thing. It'll be yeah. a thing, right. Instead of doing. Yeah. You get it. It'll be that at that point would be like season three, episode four. You know, just mm-hmm. you know, we just go with a hundred. It just sounds weird. Mm-hmm. People get confused. We don't like that. Keep it simple. Keep it honest. It's easier for us, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so sit down, enjoy yourself, buckle up. I think we should start with uh, all things <clears throat> holidays. I, it, it's December, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, being that it's the the beginning of December here. Everyone just had, hopefully, a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know I did. I it was Mine was all right. I was at work, but yeah. I got to come home after work and eat leftovers, so that was fine. That's cool always good, it. yeah. Leftovers the next day, oh. whenever. We still got a shitload of turkey left. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, after a while, you get burned out on turkey sandwiches. And- yeah. <clears throat> so, I think we should just uh, start with the beer. Sounds good. Let's get that out of the way real quick here. Appropriately. It's well chosen. Right. So tonight, from Bell's Brewing out of Comstock, Michigan, we have their Christmas Ale, which is a seasonal release, funny enough. (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) It's a Scotch Ale. Was it 7.5? It's good. Yeah, 7.5%. Doesn't really taste like a 7.5 in my opinion. No. No, it's very smooth, very nice. Yeah, it's a very easy Scotch Ale. Very easy, like compared to like Dirty Bastard or something Mm -hmm. of that sort, which really fucking hits you. This is just, ooh. It's a creeper beer. It's, yeah. I like it. I agree. So let's see. It's a traditional scotch ale. (laughs) This traditional scotch ale is rich and malty with notes of caramel and a warm finish. Certain to make any occasion festive. (laughs) Or at least a bit more bearable. Enjoy the company of friends and family. Sold. (laughs) I will do just that, Bells. Thank you for making a wonderful product. In the overall scheme of beers we've tried on the show, mm-hmm. this is going to pull Bells one step closer to shorts. I'm just saying it, it's they got to be neck and neck. They're pretty damn close. If we went opinion. back through and, and g- gathered all, I know I keep looking up at the shelf too. Like yeah, I know uh, now the shelf only has one fucking uh, beer can. We're starting over here, Champion Brute. That's the bar. That is the bar. We agreed last week on the Lampies episode. Uh, shout out to our, all our Lampy winners. Big shout out to all that our was fun. winners. And correct me if I'm wrong, but is Pez the only winner slash runner up of another category? I uh, believe you're right. Yeah, that's pretty impressive for the first outing. Yeah, he won for the best ep- or the most downloaded episode, mm-hmm. and he came in second for the, for the best Michigan beer, the tasting beer. Yeah, yeah. and then we had uh, Phil won for the trademark. Yes, he did the two front shirt. And then came in, what, third or fourth for the story. Yeah. Somewhere in there, so honorable mention. Honorable mm-hmm. mention. But yes, Lampy's was fun. Hopefully everybody enjoyed listening to that. And if you haven't, check out episode 54, which yeah, was our season closer. Yep. The bookend. If you will. But thank you to Bells. I saw this in the store, picked it up real quick, figured it'll Ooh. go good with the beginning of December, you know. It's getting the mood here, right? New beginnings kick it off with uh, some fun, festive stuff. And a scotch ale is not a bad way to start off, folks. Not at all. Merry Christmas and such. All those high holidays. <laughs> Sorry, I was taking a drink while I said that, so it kind of messed up a bit. 
I'll be glad. <clears throat> like I enjoy the holidays, but I'll be glad when they're done. Oh yeah, every year, oh, yeah. you know. So <laughs> it is what it is, right? Especially with kids, I gotta figure that like just weighs more. A little bit. I mean, a little bit. Yeah, there's a lot of little pocket notes with lists on them. Yeah. Check marks mm-hmm. and scratches and especially with kids with different like they're into different stuff. So all right, I got to check out for this stuff. I got to check out for this stuff. Oh man, I got to keep an eye out for that just in case. Yeah. And they're like two totally different worlds. They may share interests, but then there's like stuff that one loves and the other's just like, "Wow, that's really stupid." That's true and from personal experience, I'm very glad I don't have any girls. <laughs> Cuz if I make a mistake, <laughs> oh yeah. It's at least two boys gifts, you know. <laughs> I'm kind of in the clear with that one. If it's a girl's gift, I'll be like, well, it was for your mom. <laughs> you opened the wrong one. She she wanted that dress-up castle. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just put the wrong name. Or Santa put the wrong name tag. <laughs> <laughs> hey <laughs> So, uh, in keeping with the Christmas spirit, we decided, very last minute. Extremely last minute. That we were going to do a half bracket to celebrate all the best Christmas movies that we know of. That, that we, we thought could were worthy. think of. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a bunch out there made for TV, fucking Hallmark Channel. Yeah. We didn't want to call Holiday all episodes that. of your favorite shows. I mean, to jump in was to jump in. We just wanted something to throw together real quick to surprise you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays. Hopefully you pick the winner. Right. We're gonna, t- we're gonna, uh, it's like I said, a half bracket, so it's only gonna be 32, something quick, just for the month. Yeah. A couple weeks here, just to juice up our Facebook and Twitter and uh, Patreon for anybody that wants to play along with that. Because we've gotten quite a bit of comments of, why aren't you guys doing this? It's, yeah, it's almost like it's expected now. Yeah. So, so we're like, oh, okay, well, we were planning on doing it, you know, March. next December. <laughs> oh, yeah, for the for Christmas, the Christmas yeah. one. But, uh, people didn't like that. So, nobody wants to wait. Nobody wants to wait. So you know what? Merry Christmas. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully you can uh, head right over to our Facebook page, mm-hmm. uh, Corner House Chronicles. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or you can go to our actual... Uh, our website has, our all, website the has yes. all the links. website has all the links as well. Uh, our Twitter page. Corner House Chronicles. Oh, wait. No, oh, yeah. Go to the, the website first. I'm sorry. chcpodcast.com. There you go. Uh, our Twitter page, at Corner HC Podcast. And then um, on Patreon slash Cornerhouse Chronicles. If you'd like to play along on there, again, the votes are double. The votes are double, and you get some fun prizes. Yep. And incentives for being a uh, Patreon member of ours. We'll soon to have a fun secret podcast episodes on there. A little something special. A little something for you guys to follow along with. We're excited about it. So, uh, again, we pulled this movie bracket together in like uh, 15 minutes. Yep. And uh, we had our random drawing, got a couple of excellent first-round matchups. We just wanted to go go through a couple real quick. Uh, the first one is uh, A Christmas Story. Lovely movie. Classic. And that got seated up against Miracle on 34th Street. Now, that's a tough one. That's going to be a close vote, I think. I think so, too. I'm pulling for A Christmas Story, but... I think Miracle might pull it off, but you never know, because... Our brackets go to shit after the first round. I know. <laughs> they do, too. I can never... I never get it. Uh, another notable is uh, the movie Scrooged. Love that movie. That That is my pick for the winner. But and I don't think... It, it'll make it to maybe the top eight, I think. But well, I, I'll tell you. For I want this, it to win. This first round, it drew Bad Santa. I think it's better than Bad Santa, but... I do, too. I'm not the one who makes the decisions around nope, here. Nope, nope. We are uh, open democracy here. Every vote counts. Another really good one that we had um, that came up here in the first round is uh, everybody's favorite debate, the movie Die Hard. Well, I mean, a lot of people consider it a holiday Christmas movie. I do, for sure. Right. A Bruce lot of- Willis doesn't, but you know what? <laughs> Fuck him <laughs> right. on that decision. Screw you, buddy. But that <laughs> drew a really tough first round matchup in A Christmas Carol. Yeah. That's a classic. And I, I, it might get some votes. I think Die Hard's going to pull it off in the first round. I would hope. But just me. Now, looking ahead real quick, just because that's how I like to play things. <laughs> if, it, if it manages to get past A Christmas Carol, mm-hmm. the second round matchup that it will have will either be Home Alone or Gremlins. 
Damn. All right, so that right there is a tough decision. Home Alone won, um, right? Against Gremlins. Against Gremlins. In the won. first round. That's that's a heavy hitter. I'm looking at Home Alone, probably pulling that one off. I, I, Most people I, don't I, think Christmas when they think Gremlins. I do. I mean, there's Christmas. It's, it's Christmas time. It's He's Christmas getting time. a Christmas present for his son. It's true. I don't know. I, I, I would put money on Gremlins. Okay. Prefer, that, that's just me, though. Uh, okay. So either way. Either Home way. Home Alone or Gremlins. That's still a tough... Tough match. If Die Hard gets into the second round, that's its second round matchup, and then from there, I'm not going to go through the other ones oh, right no, now because no, 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 I'd no. like we'll, we'll keep it to the the polls on Facebook and Twitter yeah. and Patreon. Um, but that's exciting. That is really exciting. We also like to uh, because Die Hard is such a debatable thing right now in yeah. popular culture. We thought to make it fair, mm-hmm. we'd include Lethal Weapon. I feel that is a Christmas movie as well. I do too. It starts off on a Christmas vibe. So that um, any movie that has a Christmas song in the very beginning, come on, uh, yeah, it's how are hard you going to argue? Like, no, 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 that's not a Christmas. Movie. There's a fucking Christmas tree in multiple homes. Christmas so, lights. I mean, the Lethal Weapon pick. What it is, what it is. Yeah. It drew uh, the movie Four Christmases. The first time you're introduced to Mel Gibson, he's doing a sting <laughs> operation in a Christmas tree fucking lot. It's got to be a Christmas. It's got to be right. a Christmas movie. I'm sorry. I agree with you. I had to be sold on the Die Hard thing, but once I got there, I'm in. Yeah, you know, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Some of the other good ones we had in here: the Santa Claus, Nightmare Before Christmas, um, Edward Scissorhands is on the list. The Polar mm-hmm. Express. We got some pretty good ones here. So hopefully, everybody can go over and vote. There's some quality movies on there. The one we pulled at the very last minute and added to the list was the movie Dutch. That was a CHC. That was like a veto. Yeah, yeah. We, we made sure we that made movie sure that was in it. there. because uh, If you haven't seen the movie Dutch starring the classic actor Ed O'Neill, do yourself a favor. Watch it. The BB gun. Uh, that's oh, my favorite God. scene. <laughs> I enjoy when he does the fireworks presentation. That was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great movie. Yeah, oh, man. In the first round, it drew uh, The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Ooh. That's going to be a tough one. A couple great actors. We'll see how that one plays out. It all depends on how your childhood was, in my opinion. True. I mean, what movies meant more to you? Looking at the list, I'd go with National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation was probably number one as far as I remember watching the most yeah. growing up and stuff. That was That's a great movie. Jelly of the Month Club. Yep. <laughs> I want to get a Christmas sweater with Cousin Eddie on it. I actually looked into this because mm-hmm. I seen it on uh, Facebook the other day. Yep. It's $90. Oh. Yeah. I don't want one that bad. No. I'd rather the one with He-Man on it. Oh, I didn't see the He-Man That, one. that one's a cool one. <laughs> Ooh. Like, I've seen a few. There's a bunch of sites out there that get in the ugly holiday sweater vibe. Yep. Like, because I seen some Ghostbuster ones, and I was like, "All right, they look okay," and that's what drew me to the website. And I looked through their list, but all of them were like seventy to ninety dollars. I was like, "I'm not paying that much for a fucking ugly sweater." Uh, it might be worth it if you can wear it a couple years. And I mean, depending on yeah, the quality of it. But I mean, like, all right, for a hoodie, you're paying at least fifty bucks, right? Most times. Most times. Yeah. Depending on what you're getting. Right. But I'm not paying like almost double that for a fucking ugly holiday sweater. I mean, at least the hoodie I can wear when it's chilly. Like, you get more months, you get more use out of that 50 bucks. Right, but if you're one of those people that attends, like, four or five Christmas parties a year. Yeah. And the ugly uh, Christmas sweater party. You know, like, they, they, they're they themed now. So, oh. So, there's a gentleman I follow. I'm sorry, I got to no, interject that's, yeah. real quick. Because there's a uh, hashtag that's trending. And I got to inform you of this. Mm-hmm. So, there's a guy I follow on Facebook, Glenn Hetrick. He's on the uh, Sci-Fi Channel's uh, FX makeup show, which I forget the name of at the moment, but we'll figure that out as it goes. But he is a special effects makeup artist. What's his name? Glenn Hetrick. And he does special effects. Okay. What's the hashtag? Or are you looking that up? Face Off on Sci-Fi Channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. The show's yeah. called Face Off, where right, they right, do the right. special effects makeup. Yeah, the wife watches it all the time, it's every good season. good show. Yeah. It's interesting watching them come up with all the ideas and actually making the stuff. Anyhow, if you go on Instagram, where this is mainly where this hashtag is prevailing, it's uh, hashtag reindeer boob. 
or reindeer boobs? Reindeer boobs? <laughs> oh, is it where the chicks cut the hole out of the sweater? Yeah, and make their yeah, nipple yeah, like yeah. Rudolph's nose yeah. and then put googly eyes on their boob and that. It's actually like taking off. And people are doing this and going to Christmas parties. With their titty hanging out? Yeah, guys are doing it too. Or they'll make him look like a snowman. Like, they're going crazy with this. But they'll yeah, cut okay. a hole in their ugly sweater, let their boob hang out, guy or girl, and they'll decorate said appendage. And Now, being a dude, yeah, if I go to a Christmas party and I see a guy with a, a hole in his sweater mm-hmm. and his man boob is dressed up. I mean, that reindeer is going to be a little furrier you know, than normal. I'm like, yeah, that's funny. I get yeah. it. If a chick does it, you're if, like, can I look? If like, a chick does it. I'm probably going to stare at her all night. Yeah. You know? I I, I, I mean, I'm not going to say that's what they're going for. Am I going to get in trouble? You might. For staring all night? Because she's probably going to catch me at least twice. Hey, that guy over there staring at my boob. Yeah. Especially if her boyfriend's like, hey, what the fuck, buddy? Yeah. But I mean... At that point, you're like, hey, what the fuck, buddy? Her tit's out. Yeah. You can't just pull the titty out and expect us not to leave. Even if it's dressed like a fucking reindeer, I'm still going to stare at it. You know? The the, just... uh, (laughs) I don't know if it's an attention getter or it's funny, but yeah, you're still going to get a lot of looks. Yeah. It's like kudos to the first couple of people who did it. Mm-hmm. And then once it becomes a trend. Then you got to watch out. Now you have to start like, oh, it, again, am I okay to look at this? That's, that's a personal choice. Now, a lot of chicks are probably like, yeah, go ahead, look at it. It's no yeah. big deal, right? But there's going mean, to be one story. Right, where somebody's going to be like, oh, I oh. wanted to pet your reindeer. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be that guy. You know? Right, absolutely. I was thinking more like, all right, you go there to this party, right? Uh-huh. Odds are you're either going to go there alone or you're going to go there with your girlfriend, right? Yeah, right. So if you see one of her friends or someone sh- you guys mutually know with their boob hanging out. Especially if it's her work party if it's and her, you're the yeah. guest. And you're going to be like, hey. Whoa. You're like, whoa, Becky from accounting's titties hang out. Yeah, she's going to say that to you, and you're going to look, and then she's going to hit you and say, well, All don't night. fucking look. Right. And you're like, how am I not going to look? If you're going to, yeah, I'm, I'm, now I'm looking at the sun. I'm just going to look Yeah, there's, at, yeah. the whole time. It's going to be awkward, I think, for some people. But other people, it'll be funny. And I don't Especially know. Especially like if you're a boob guy. You know what I mean? They are out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> you'd be like, if, a, if you were an ass man and a chick... Come walking up and assless chaps, you're like the whole night. Your attention's going to be on the fact that yeah, you know she's I, her butt's hanging out. This is true. I have seen that on on the interweb. There, yeah, it's a weird trend. It's interesting what people do now. I, <laughs> okay, got to get those likes, buddy. Yeah. One of the funniest comments though I've seen on that post was "Watch out for the elephant trunks." Oh yeah, yeah, that might be a thing too. It's a good thing the elephant's not common around Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> that could be like a, th- a summer theme. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of all these wonderful wild animals, have you seen the uh, teaser commercial for Lion King? I have. What were your thoughts on that? Um, I think it looks pretty sweet. I was always a sucker for the Lion King. That was one of the few movies that... They brought out that I was like, oh shit, I like this one, you know. Yeah. Um, And I will admit freely, I cried like a baby. How can you not? When uh, when his dad got trampled there, Mufasa. Yep. And then you get to hear it again. James Earl Jones is reprising the role. He is signed on, right? Yes, he's the voice. I think it's going to be cool. Now you get to see that in like 4K HD quality of him getting fucking like just trampled. Probably going to go see it in the theater. You kind of have to. I mean, yeah. How can you not? I mean, Aladdin, that's coming out too. I was in my house growing up, there was a very strict no Disney movie rule <laughs> enforced by my mom. She I was, remember you you mentioned that before. Yeah. So there's a very short list of Disney movies that I've actually seen. And out of all the ones that I have seen, Aladdin is top of that list. Yeah. It's a great fucking movie. It is a good movie. I'm excited for that. I'm kind of disappointed that Robin Williams won't be Genie. Yeah, that's a bummer. That is kind of a bummer, but... It is cool when they can, you know, like James Earl Jones, yeah. and they can bring them actors involved like that, yeah. Huh. So, we'll see how that goes. But I am excited for The Lion King. I think that's going to do very well. I think it looks pretty sweet. I do, too. I did. Uh, I saw it on Facebook, and I read some of the comments. And a lot of people were mentioning how awesome the CGI is for this movie. It looks so real. And then there were other people who were commenting and they were calling it live action. 
(laughs) (laughs) To be fair, (laughs) CGI and actually having a lion where you do like, I'm going to put peanut butter on the top of his mouth so he looks like Mr. Ed when he talks. Right. Yeah, no, you're going to lose fucking digits on that. Even if the camera guy was able to get into the depths of the, the animal kingdom enough to see a monkey hold a lion cub up. And all the other animals bow, bow down. at the same time. Yeah, how are you going to do that? <laughs> Explain to me that process. Yeah, I don't even think the lady that lived with the, the apes uh, had that much no. inside info in the animal kingdom. So for those of you on the social media that keep commenting and saying it's a live action movie, please stop. It's, it, just, just please stop. Yeah. Just don't say that. That's all. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. It has a great cast, too. Like, not only is James Earl Jones in it as Mufasa. But we got uh, Seth Rogen as Pumbaa, Donald Glover as Simba. Okay. Uh, I saw Beyonce's in there somewhere. She is. She's uh, Nala. She's okay. The, the girl. girlfriend. Yep, the girlfriend. Of the cub, yeah. Okay. Uh, Who's playing Timon, does it say? It does. Okay. That is Billy, oh, I'm going to fuck up his last name, Etcher, E-I-C-H-N-E-R, Etchner. Huh. So let's see, what else has he done? He, I don't recognize that name. Neighbors 2, uh, American Horror Story. Looks more of a voice actor. He's in Angry Birds, uh, Simpsons. He played a guy named Billy, funny enough. Huh. But we got James Earl Jones as Mufasa. We got, uh, I'm horrible at reading names. <laughs> uh, I'll let you have a crack at that one. I know the dude. I've seen his work. He's a oh, great actor. yeah. Yeah, say his name. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Chiwetel Ija Ofor? That's about the best Is I the E do. in his last name maybe silent? Possible. G O four? He's a great actor. He's been in a lot of stuff. Yes, he has. Uh, what he's in Doctor Strange, The Very Martian. Right. Puck. Twelve Years a Slave as the main character. Uh Salt. I mean he's been in a lot of great he's fucking movies. Yeah. I just have a poor time pronouncing names correctly. But he's going to be Scar, which I think is awesome. Uh, Key from Key and Peele. Yeah. Keegan-Michael Key. He's going to be uh, one of the uh, hyenas. Kamira. Let's see. Who else we got? Eric Andre. All right. How do you feel about Eric Andre? As like, You ever see like his show on uh, Adult Swim? No, I don't think I know who you're talking about. Let me... Oh, yeah, that dude. That dude. He, yeah. Yeah. He's going to be one of the hy- hyenas. I don't know. His show's fucking weird. I guess for a voice acting, yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know? Like, you know who else I don't really like is, uh, he was in the league. I can't think of his name. Rafi? No. The other dude. He got a, a show on Comedy Central for a while. It was like a sketch comedy. Uh, I can't remember his damn name right now. I'm just as bad with names as you are, to be honest with you. I know as soon as I see his name, though, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, that's it. Here. Nick Kroll. Nick Kroll. That dude. Kroll or Kroll. Yeah. Or whatever the, I can't really stand that guy when I watch him. But if he was it's a voice miss. actor, I'd Yo, be like, great. yeah, whatever. Have you seen, uh, God, it's, what fucking show is that? I'm going to open another one. These Christmas sales are going down like water, baby. Yeah, I know, which is kind of bad because they're going quick. <laughs> But yeah, that Nick Kroll guy, I'm just not a fan, you know. Have you seen Big Mouth on Netflix? No. Give it a shot. Yeah, you know, people, I've heard that. I mean, he's one of the main characters, and uh, but overall the show is just, hey, what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. But it's hilarious. And it just got picked up for season three. I feel that way about the, the what the fuck is going on uh, about that BoJack Horseman show. I haven't watched that. I've heard a lot of good get it. things, but I don't know. I think this shit's way like ahead of my time or it, something. The younger generation, <laughs> maybe. Perhaps. Well, I like the wife watches it. She likes it. Ooh. So I'm like, I don't, I want to get it. Whatever. Yeah. Give me something I like, like Sunny in Philadelphia or The Office. You know what I mean? These, yeah. The go tos yeah. that I can just watch in the background noise and stuff. Lost. I mean the standards. Lost. Hey, dude. Lost a great show. <laughs> you had to you had to watch it to get into it. You know. It took a minute. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I was ready for that commitment. Much like. It's always sunny. Yeah, some shows, you know, they slow down season two or three, and then you you lose interest. You find something else, Even or fall back on something, right? Yeah. 
for me, The Office was the later years, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, once uh, Steve Carell took off. Yeah. You had Will Ferrell for a minute, and you're like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, that felt like filler. Then James Spader. I like James Spader's character. He was funny. But I don't know if he fit with everyone else. No. It was a reach, yeah. I think. They knew it, too, I think. I think so. But it was, you know, we bring up weird shit, like Lost. Like Lost. What else is weird? Uh, I seen an interview between Elon Musk yeah. and Axios on HBO, and he made a comment that was just like, huh, he's fucking committed about the whole SpaceX and Mars. Okay. So he said that there's a 70% chance that he will travel to Mars. And he clarified, <laughs> traveling to Mars means moving to Mars. So at some point, he's confident enough that his company and their plans for colonizing Mars yeah. is good enough for him to, to go there and go there. Finish his existence <clears throat> on Mars. Because the odds Mars. of coming back from there, because he broke it down, like traveling there is going to be tough. Right. Living there is going to be even tougher. Like yeah. it, Once the base and everything's set up, even yep. then it's going to be tough. I wonder how long traveling there is going to take. Honestly, it depends on what technology there's there. I mean, he has a vision for the future. What we know of as time, what are we looking at? Two years? It depends. Three years? You know, I mean, without getting into too many... The theory of relativity. Yeah, yeah. Because that is what's basis of so time travel. Away. It's like traveling at the speed of light. Yeah. Going so fast that to you, it only feels like three years, but on Earth, it's been 50. Yeah. Or how that works out. It, that's some sci-fi shit it is, that I don't really know too much about. <laughs> neither do I. But Do we see a news story in the future where him and that first crew that get to Mars, all the other people mysteriously pass? Oh, I pass, guarantee he's not going to be on that first crew. And then he's... Well, the first crew he goes with. All right, yeah, the first one he goes with? The people that are there all mysteriously die, and he's the only one left, and then we don't hear from him for what if he did that on 15, purpose? 20 years. Right. That's what I'm saying, and right? And then he comes out and be like, Finally, we get a, like some form of communication from him. It was like, yeah, we're already way ahead of you guys. <laughs> when I hear the words Elon Musk says, I'm uh, 70% chance I'm going to Mars. That's a guarantee. What I mind. hear is E.T. phone home. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, This uh, is his, yeah. his little warning to us that he's finally got the technology available on Earth mm. to get himself back to wherever he came from. I don't know. I see what you're saying. I do. Um, I don't know. I think out of all the billionaires in the world, mm -hmm. he is clearly head of the class when it says, like, I have a vision for the future, and I'm putting my money towards that. Yeah. I like the idea he's got for the tunnels with the traffic yeah, underneath. Yeah. I, I like that idea. It's smart. I'm, I, I don't wouldn't do it in L.A. just because <laughs> California could break and fall into the ocean at any given moment or burn, <laughs> yeah. you know. At least underground, they'd be safe. I don't know. I guarantee he's thought of all this or paid people to think of all this. Yeah. These kind of ideas, to me, seem more uh, logical overseas in other countries where they have a lot of room, yeah. a lot of like ground China? to cover. Yeah. Like, all right, the majority of the people that live in China are all on the coast, not so much in the central hub of the country of China because yeah. it's pretty fucking desolate out there, mm -hmm. much like Russia is. Yeah. A lot of mountain ranges yeah, and stuff. Yeah. In Really? Places where people can't really thrive. They don't want to yeah. go. But connecting the places that people can via the underground uh, highway system, I guess. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. A bullet train or whatever happens to come up throughout time. I, that's a great idea. But people putting money towards that is... Eh. But if a billionaire is like, fuck it, let's give it a shot. Uh, yeah, if he wants to. Yeah. Right? Right. It's his money. <laughs> get on board, get out of the way, man. <laughs> Shit. You know. That's the way I look at it. I mean, at a certain point, when you achieve your dreams, and then you're a billionaire, and you're like, okay, now what? You could either be that guy that's like, I'm just going to spend the rest of my life enjoying my money, or you can be the guy like, all right, new goal. We're going to fucking Mars. We are going to colonize Mars, bitches. Yeah. And if you have that kind of drive and can get shit done, more power to you. I saw, I told you before we started, I saw that story. Well, it wasn't a story. It was a video on Facebook clearly animated you mm. know but it was how to terraform, terraform mars, mars into yeah. a livable planet it made sense watching the video you know i'm like why there are arguments why aren't we already yeah. doing this if we already have i mean if some nutbags out there making a video of it how can, <laughs> how can we not I like to call be scientists, doing it? but yeah whatever you know 
No, I mean, like, they're all theories, though. But, like, all right, the one that I, I think you were referencing was the, uh, if they detonate uh, nukes. It's like thermonuclear weapons. Yeah. You know. That'll definitely fuck some shit up there. Mess with the weather to where yeah. it starts raining more in their atmosphere mm-hmm. and it collects and now we got water and their ice caps will melt on Mars. and uh, it's That's a good start, but like one of the benefits of Earth is the uh, electromagnetic field that surrounds it. It's pretty much like our defense system against the sun. Like the Aurora Borealis. Yeah. That's just particles from the sun hitting the magnetic field and sparking pretty much. Huh. Which is very cool. And every so many thousands of years, the polarity flips, which we're coming up to. But when I say coming up to, it's still going to be like a thousand years or within a thousand years. Yeah, wasn't that like the 2012 rumor? <laughs> yeah, that, that was the, the one po- of them. The ice caps were going to flip was or something? F- yeah. yeah. It happens. It happens regularly. It's on, on a time schedule. Yeah. And we're coming up to it. But Mars doesn't have that. We, we know that for sure. I'm fairly confident. I okay. have to do some more research, but I'm pretty sure they don't have it. I don't do science, so yeah, yeah. it makes sense. But, I mean, if we could artificially make one, but by doing that, we're making pretty much a, a force field, right? Yeah. Science fiction. Like, we're jumping into that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beauty of, like, a lot of the stuff that we have today, like smartphones, automatic doors. Like, those were just, like, concepts people made for TV shows and comic books that young kids, like, held on to. Yeah. As they went through school, they were like, I'm going to be a fucking engineer, and I'm going to make that shit, because yeah. I want that. And they did. And they did, and that's... Or are doing. Or currently, yeah. yeah. And that's a lot of our modern technology is based off of, like, science fiction TV shows from the 60s, or comic books, or all that stuff that influenced these fucking people so much. Yeah. That they were like, you know what? I want to be able to talk to my buddy, like, Tim, tell me what's going on in Spain and Tim's Hello, like Nextel. well <laughs> right now I'm in Madrid and this is what <laughs> courtesy beep yep <laughs> it's funny you said that about like smartphones and stuff it you just triggered my my brain mm. okay so I got two things that I want to tell you real quick one Shoot. I found earlier this is from uh Sky News okay which I believe is like the airplane magazine or no has to deal with it, but I don't know if it's like the ones you find on the airplane or if it deals with the yeah. aviation. Industry. No, no, no. I think it's the one you find on the airplane. It probably it, could be. I haven't been on a plane in quite a while. Me, so. well, yeah, obviously. Me <laughs> I don't think the one you were on <laughs> actually had. No, like there was no the... magazines. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have read them if there was. Um, e- either way, Sky News. More than seven thousand people are still watching black and white television across the UK. I believe it. It's been a half a century since the dawn of color television, but more than 7,000 people across the UK are still watching black and white TV. The accurate number is 7,161 UK households are spurning modern technology and have not switched over. Uh, This is something I just learned reading this article before you showed up tonight. Um, There are licenses for BBC programs. Yes. People that live in the UK have to buy a license to To watch watch certain television programs, okay? Wow. Last month, TV licensing said that more than 26,000 people between the ages of 18 and 25 have been caught, caught, watching live TV or BBC iPlayer without a license in the past year. Those dirty fuckers. That's weird to me. 26,000 people were caught not having a license to watch TV. They said in the year 2000, there were 212,000 black and white TV licenses issued. But by the year 2003, that number had more than half to yeah. 93,000. And then it dipped below 10 in 2015, and now it stands at 7,161. I mean, to me, that's like people in the United States who still have landlines. Yeah, I mean, there you go. It's, I mean, I guarantee there's still people in the United States that still have black and white TVs. Probably not as many. I don't know. That's weird. Technology is weird. How you can get these statistics, connect with people around the world in a blink of an eye. Right. Like, back in the 70s and 80s, they had ham radio, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you had to have a license to operate a ham radio. Mm-hmm. And now it's like any fucking like fifth grader. Odds are, can get on the internet with ease with a tablet, a phone, anything, and just be like, YouTube. And then they can go in YouTube comments yeah. and start talking to someone in China or fucking wherever the fuck. 
the fact that I can learn that 7,000 people in the UK watch black and white TV on a smartphone in America. Yeah. Phew, explosion. It's a weird time, and it's only going to get weirder to us. But, like, all right, think of your kids, right? Yeah. They're growing up with this as, like, this is the standard as being a fucking child. Uh-huh. So when they're 20, 30, what are they going to have? I've thought about it. Well, I've tried to think about it. It's I like don't when, know. It's when you try to help your parents with, like, a computer issue. You're like, oh, all you got to do is this, this, this. <laughs> yeah, to right. To us, yeah. To them, they're like, a fucking computer was, like, a five megabyte cabinet that took up a fucking 30 year wall. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a picture on the internet the other day of a of 10, the disc. The, the disc, yeah. 10 megabyte or 10 whatever. Megabyte and that it was, was, dude, that was yeah. like three or four laser discs. In oh, it was one. Big. Yeah, it was, it, was, huge. it was huge. It was like a small dinner table. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, too. Yeah. I mean, the leaps and bounds technology makes is just astounding, but we take it for granted. We Some really people do. do, yeah. Oh, shit. All right. I'm still way scared of technology, so I don't take it for granted, but I still I'm I'm completely amazed every day oh, yeah. by something new. So you <laughs> my phone's so damn old, but still every day I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Look at my that. My brother was asking me uh, about like Xboxes the other day. Mm-hmm. And he was like, Should I get the one that has a one terabyte hard drive? Why is it so expensive? I was like, it's a computer. A terabyte. It's a fucking terabyte, <laughs> and even that isn't that's that much a, these days. No, but it's a lot for a video game oh, system. Fuck yeah, you know. But I mean, like, all right, we grew up on PlayStation, Super Nintendo, Sega, Nintendo, Nintendo, Shit. Nintendo. Game Boy, dude. Yeah, and then jumping from that to like when they came out with like Sega CD. I remember colored Game Boy. That was huge. Where it wasn't black and white no more. Yeah. Holy shit! That was, I a was game like, changer. see you, UK. <laughs> <laughs> We're in America now. Yeah. We got colorized Game Boy. Do you remember when they f- it was uh, <clears throat> like Tetris? PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3 when they came out with like the Madden and it looks so real? Oh, shit. I dude. remember people like looking at the demo and going, who's playing? Yeah. Being, when you're standing in the media play. Yeah. Playing the demo version. I remember getting lost playing hockey. Like I thought I, I was watching, watching a game. game. Oh, shit. I'm playing the game right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And then now you look back on that and you're like, wow, that looks like shit. It's funny you bring that up because that leads me into my second point. Okay. They are building, now I can't remember exactly if it's in Vegas or L.A., but they are building an EA Sports Arena. Really? For, like, professional video gaming. It's going to have a drive-in movie theater size screen. It's going to hold, like, twenty or 30,000 seat, like, spectator. Okay. And then you're going to have the dudes down, or I don't want to say dudes, the people, the people down in the middle playing their video game, and you'll be able to see it on the big screen. Okay. And, like, it's now taking... Do you remember the movie The Wizard? That's exactly what I was going to say. We're, we're was, in it now. It's happening now. What happened then? I, I know, but, like... When Nintendo would do, the, like, the tour throughout the United States and do the championships. Yeah, but you had But to, this is grander. You had to be in a spot to hear about it, let yeah, alone you, get to it. Or get the magazine. Now it's... Open so your you're, phone. Now, it's yeah. You're playing on Xbox, yeah, you know. You're within the top 25, you're invited. I remember PlayStation a couple years back offered a million dollars, or maybe it was Xbox. It was a million dollars if you could play a game of baseball online mm-hmm. against a computer or another person and you could throw a perfect no game. Oh, had wow. to be a perfect game. Million dollars. No and shit. And you had to be online so it could be tracked, and you know, recorded, and yeah. recorded. But I mean, this is it now. We got like the wow. kids growing up. Gener- the next generation of kids, the the actual participation in sports is going to drop off significantly. Oh, because they're going to play the video games yeah. instead, yeah. and they're going to make just as much money or more, or more. Yeah, it's like how you said you went to uh, your son's uh, elementary school graduation, and they had to say like, "What do I want to be when I grow up?" Yeah, and how many of them said YouTubers? <sighs> Five or six. Yeah. Yeah. At least out of a class of thirty, yeah. I mean that's a big number. That's that's a good right. chunk. And the fact that like people are our age, you're like, <laughs> you want to be on YouTube. These motherfuckers are pulling in money. Now I'm pretty good when I play Madden. Yeah, I I can play some Madden, but some of these kids are playing twenty two, twenty six hours straight. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. And they're just getting so good at the game now that it's not even really mm-hmm. a game; it's a job. Yeah. And I mean, shit! If you can play that many video games and win a tournament for fifty grand, hundred grand, set awesome. yourself up for a year. Like, all right, what if like you're? It's kind of like golf or something. You know what I mean? Where they don't <laughs> play. 
I, I'm not comparing the two. I'm, yeah. I'm comparing the payout. You know, you might play one tournament a year, but if you win $150,000, I mean, you just that's a, a year, your setup dude. For a year. Shit. Yeah. That's like three of my salaries. Like, all right, imagine one day you come home, right, and mm-hmm. your oldest son's like, Dad, I threw a no-hitter, and he won that million dollars off PlayStation or Xbox or whatever it was. I would take back every bad thing I ever said about him playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> In the blink of an eye. Yeah. But, I mean, like at that point, you're just like, all right, like bullshit. Technically, would he be eligible because he's so young? But let's say he is, right? And he makes that, and like, all right, and that just set his focus for the rest of his life as a professional video game player. It's so weird right now. I worry that like there's going to be too many different video games with a professional with the professional tag to him. Yeah. How do you become a professional Minecraft player? Or someone will think of it. Well, we'll no, like get there Super eventually. Smash yes. Brothers. Right. I mean, that's the biggest. But it's a fighting game, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you have to beat your opponent. Yes. In Minecraft, that's just my example. I, mean, I don't know how you win. There could be a tournament of who can make the most elaborate fucking map. Maybe. I mean, there it, you it go. could go on and on and there, on. Trademark. <laughs> there you go. Starting season Start two off right. Strong. <laughs> We're going to write that one down. <laughs> but, I mean, like, for the future of professional gaming, it's so wide open because there's so much you can do Yeah. in each game. Like, each game that comes out, you have the story mode, which is kind of falling off nowadays. Most games that are focusing more on multiplayer aspect, because that's what it's people It's just play. online play now. Yeah. yeah. Like Fortnite and shit like that. Exactly. Where it's everybody together. And you can be a professional Fortnite player. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a professional wrestling game where it was always Royal Rumble mode? So it was always 30 people, and you just fought until you... The game was, you know, you won Trademark. the Royal Rumble, and that was it. <laughs> that would be, like, to, uh, two for two, baby. <laughs> starting off so strong. <laughs> no, that would be pretty fucking sweet. I would enter the stipulation that you could only be, like, uh, you make your own character. So that, that could be an off, sh- off, like, yeah. So that way you were like, shoot, I'm not yeah. always going to be Hulk Hogan or whatever the most popular wrestler is at the time. Mean, you know, it's a Royal Rumble. Or what if you random? One. What if you enter and it's randomly assigned? Not only is your number. Out of that thirty round, but your character assigned, too, but the character as well. And they and like when you enter the um, the lobby of the Royal Rumble, it tells you the thirty characters that mm-hmm. you might get. So you can be like, I look through them. I don't like my chances. I'll back out real quick. Yeah. You know, other people are like, "Fuck it, I'm in." Yeah, that could be interesting. What if in the future, when they combine the PlayStation and uh, Microsoft, just make networks, a single platform, right? Yeah. What if everything is like a dollar a play or two dollars a play, where you have your online a virtual arcade? But it, essentially a virtual essentially. arcade against Trademark. other people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to believe that one's already in the works somewhere. Oh, I guarantee But it. in case it's not, trademark. Trademark. I still think, like, all right, you have that one platform, but you'll still have, like, the Xbox store, the PlayStation store, this store, Steam, which is more of, like, a computer one, would okay. jump in there on the... And it'll just be like, I don't give a fuck whatever you're operating on. Yeah, the system's relevant. But it's just like, this is the... You enter the network. You, yeah, have you seen uh, the movie uh, Ready Player One? I haven't. No. Good fucking movie. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Good movie. So much reference from like pop culture just thrown in, but I think that is possibly a future of gaming. That's like a virtual reality thing, though. Yeah. Okay. Like, you can make Which your Which, where we're headed. Yeah. We, you make your own <laughs> avatar, right? Okay. To make it look like whatever you want it to be. Um, there's people on there that make... Uh, like Dwight's second, second life. Exactly. <laughs> Where he's still a paper salesman, but he can fly and he has laser beams. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, oh, shit. highly recommend checking out that movie if you want to put it on your list for season two. But it's more like second life in a way, but there's like things to do. Like you could build the Dukes of Hazard generally, or you could build Bigfoot or whatever car you ever wanted and get in online races against other people and they could have like James Bond's fucking okay. Jaguar or so it's like Tron but be- next like level next level okay yeah okay I mean you could like make your guy look like Freddy so it's Kruger. like the Sims like you're putting yourself into the Sims mm-hmm. and controlling your little character in that little world and you can do whatever you want but it's more in depth and it can be whatever you want and you could be a, a professional yeah. yeah you could be a professional baseball player online this is like the step before the Matrix. Pretty much, yes. Okay. Think of it that way. But I think that's eventually where it's going to be to where more people live their life online than they do in reality. Do you hope that that happens while you're here? I would like to see it, but I would hate for the aftermath of what that causes. 
Yeah, because that's going to be dirty. <laughs> that's especially if the grid closes. <laughs> it just shuts down. You have a whole world of kids and because it'd be like the Bitcoin, how that's big right now. Mm-hmm. Whatever online currency that game or virtual reality system uses is going to become the currency. Okay. So economies will fall or have to switch to an online currency. There's going to be so much like real world shit that'll fuck everything. Like armies, are they pointless at this point? Is someone going to try to take over because everyone's on fucking the internet 23 hours of the day? I mean, there's so much to say yeah. and speculate. That's a dark side. That's a dark side of the topic there. True, but <laughs> if you look at the worst, you get a better uh, mindset of what can happen. I do opinion. that from time to time. Yeah, absolutely. I what I was thinking of while you were talking was uh, they took the video gaming that's you know the direction we're headed in, and they're going to build an amusement park based on Super Mario. I, I think it's in Florida. But I'd have to look real quick. I can't remember. Universal Studios. Universal. Okay, yeah, there you go. You sent me the uh, link to it. That's what it was. Which, I gotta say, it looks sweet. Right. The <laughs> schematics of it yeah. and the animation part <laughs> look so, really awesome. It's a whole, like, Nintendo land that they have set up to where there'll be, like, Super Mario Galaxy area, Mushroom Kingdom with the, the castle. Yeah. Uh, Wario's Gold Mine, Yoshi's Island, which is an actual fucking island, Luigi's Mansion, which I guess would be the haunted area. Okay. A Pokemon Kanto area, so where it's all Pokemon themed. Okay. Uh, Kirby's Dream Land, uh, Donkey Kong area, Animal Crossing. I wonder if they could do the Donkey Kong area like a the Wipeout game, Ooh. where everything's like the styrofoam that hits yeah. you, and you got to climb up in that would the be barrels. Fun. You know, yeah, that would be sweet. The first thing I thought of is if they don't have the like greatest go kart track in the fucking world, mm-hmm. the whole thing's for naught. You're out. Why He's out, folks. Without Super Mario Kart, yeah, I mean, like it's you have all, void. all of this potential. Like, cool Yoshi's Island, fucking Pokemon area, sweet, mm-hmm. fucking Mushroom Kingdom, awesome. If you don't have like the most elaborate fucking like go kart track, that's more like a fucking miniature golf course where you have a bunch of different areas you can try out, different themed. Oh, that would be cool. Exactly. <laughs> oh, You're just man. wasting your goddamn time, in my opinion. What if they do it in a virtual reality setting, where you sit in a go kart and you have the the VR set on and you Ooh. steer yourself through you know twelve different courses? Okay. But you don't actually move in the go kart. You're just you well, know. Well, the the. Mo- the like the thing it, you're yeah, sitting it, on it, has like a uh, hydraulic system where it like shakes like and a, turns and like yeah. you feel it. Okay. Maybe. Okay. I mean, I'm giving that a solid maybe, but I think actual getting into a fucking go kart that has like fiberglass body of the different ones you can choose throughout the games right. would be a cooler experience for people. Okay. It would be. I agree. But if they can do the VR thing, we'll settle. Right? Yeah. Because I don't know how they're going to do like the green shell, red shell, blue shell. Idea. Plus, if you're in the VR, you could look down at a programmed outfit on Mario, on that, Luigi. Okay. You know what I mean? Or your Bowser, you, Donkey Kong, yeah, or yeah, whoever. You, you yeah. look the part. Okay. Now, okay. where I'm going with this is what if they take that same idea and they put it in another room next door uh-huh. and you play Goldeneye? <gasps> Get where the fuck in your, out of in here. your headset, you see the four squares, oh. right? And you move through your square. That'd be sweet. Trademark. <laughs> Nintendo, if you're listening, you're welcome. <laughs> Just put us on the guest it'd list. Be, it'd be like for opening day. It would be like laser tag with a VR. Mm-hmm. So you're actually walking through. But you play the Golden Eye missions, yeah. or Boards or like whatever. They you are. go in. You walk. You put that vest on. You had the guns. Or, you wouldn't even need that. Well, no, you would. You need some sort of handset, right? But it would just be like a controller you would hold, like maybe the Wii uh, controller. Hooked okay. up to a vest, yeah. right? Okay. And you put the goggles on. So you see, like, say you want to be odd job. So you're like, look down, you see the suit. Right. You picked whatever gun, you have that gun. Yeah. Because all you're holding really is a controller, right? And then to top it off, I would put the people in the VR headsets in little three foot by three foot rooms so they run into walls. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> and like the bo- the oh, floor shit. would be like a treadmill, like a multi directional treadmill. Oh. Oh, oh, damn. You're welcome. Somebody make that, please, because I would spend a shitload of money there. I'm on the first flight down. That'd be sweet. <laughs> I was trying to think of other cool Nintendo games that you could 
Fuck, if somebody just opened a fucking golden eye fucking and started fucking chaining that out. That would be sweet. Oh. I'm not getting in contact with Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Fuck paintball. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this one won't hurt as much. And each time, you'd have to swipe like a debit card or something to get an extra life. (laughs) I mean, there you go, right? You could make so much money off that. I think this is leading the league for season two's trademark ideas. The virtual reality arcade. The virtual reality fucking golden eye, fuck. <laughs> well, I mean, we could do other games. Oh, yeah, we could totally do other once games. Once we get this one mastered. <clears throat> I have to look into this. What kind of licensing fees? I'll tell you what, though. That EA Sports Arena, it, this just might be something they got on the horizon already. If it's something, though. You know? Imagine yourself sitting up in an arena with 30,000 people, and you're watching what the size of a hockey rink down in the middle. Yeah, and looking and around. Just like, a bunch of people in VR headsets wandering around, bumping into each other, playing uh, a game, and you're watching the game on the big screen. I was thinking more like, all right, you're one of the two people playing, right? You're on the platform in front of the giant fucking screen, and like, all right, the other team calls a timeout, or you're picking your fucking play. You pick your play in Madden, right? And then you turn around and see 20,000 people just cheering. Also, do you hear them, or do you have noise-canceling headphones on? Fuck that, you hear them. You have to. You'll get that fucking pump like fucking pro wrestlers do. If you're playing a sports game, I agree. Yeah. If you're playing Goldeneye... Different story. You're going to want to hear you be the people walking yeah. in the game, or, or I, you know, yeah, doors, or gunshots, or whatever. But still, you could be look, looking around and seeing, like, wow, there's 20,000 fucking people. They're here to watch I me better play not video, fuck games. Up. <laughs> <laughs> video games. Video games. I wonder if there's anybody out there that's listening to this that would be, like, a professional gamer or somebody who, you know, could hold their own yeah. in a gaming tournament. Like I said, I, I think I'm pretty good at Madden, but I, I don't back know if in I the can day, hold that. In the earlier times of... Uh, less responsibilities. <laughs> less responsibilities. <laughs> in the early parts of uh, online gaming. I was on a ranked team for uh, Call of Duty. Yeah? Yeah. We were in the top 100 in the world. How big was the team? Uh, Six people. Six? Yeah. Okay. I was the alternate because I sucked. <laughs> but I got better. I got a ribbon, man. <laughs> Eventually, I got to go on the main team. Yeah. Uh, one of the guys on the team was actually a pro gamer. Like, he was uh, sponsored for uh, Super Smash Brothers when it, That's crazy. the early times. It was fucking weird. I was like, "How? what, what do you do? He's like, well, they pay me to go play. I was like, uh, like they'll buy the game for him. Right. Is this going to end up on ESPN 8? The Ocho? Yeah. No, I think this is going to be a 30 for 30 in about 20 years. The rise and fall of online gaming. (laughs) The fall? You see a fall in it? Only because it's going to have to progress. And I'd say fall as to what we know now as online gaming. Because what we're talking about, like the whole virtual reality, that's going to be the next step. Yeah, oh yeah, that's the next step for sure. So what's currently there, where you go to different uh, stores <clears throat> or places for these tournaments, is no longer going to be a thing. You're going to have your own setup at home, and it's going to be all online, virtual reality. Until you get invited to the where you, the you, stadium for the yes, championship finals. Exactly. Okay, okay. I remember the first time I saw a Madden tournament. Mm-hmm. It was a flyer in a bar. It was like Saturday night, Come twenty five dollar entry. You know, pick your team, play, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, man, I should do that. And I never did it. Mm-hmm. And, but I never seen any more tournaments anywhere. It's like it doesn't happen around us. It's all online because they figured we can make money off this. And then that's when I seen the baseball thing for the million dollars. Mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit! Yeah, I got to get online. They realized <laughs> we have something game. that we can make a fortune. It on. was either twenty thirteen or twenty fifteen. The, Probably 2014 the, for Madden because that's no, like, it was baseball. Oh, baseball! It was either 13 or 15. I can't remember which. Which I know two Madden games. 2014 is like the holy grail mm-hmm. of Madden. Mm-hmm. Like even now, like a lot of people that come out like 2019 is sweet, but I still love 2014. 14 was right before they did the uh, where you move the left joystick and you have like a cone of vision for the yeah. quarterback. That was tricky as shit. That's a hard thing to jump into. Yeah, yeah. and they got rid of that kind of early. They I think got, it only lasted like two seasons. If that, they, yeah. Negative press. Yeah. Because all the people that were pros and bring in like the YouTube channels and all that were like, what the fuck is this? It got a little harder. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great for the companies because when they do something, they get immediate response that they can see. And oh, hell yeah. Actually put fucking like metrics to. Immediate response too. I bet the testers. Oh, yeah. 
even. I always wondered what it would take to become a video game tester. Uh, in the beginning, not much. Do you just much. have to resume? Just, just now, apply? I now mean, you need a degree in uh, really pretty much like visual effects, like programming or some avenue that has to deal with making a game. So that way you have more of a knowledge of like Fixing coding problems. or this and that. You can say, oh, well, the bitmap here or this part, the clipping, this. Like You can throw out actual terms without being just some. But back in the day, you were just someone who like volunteered and they randomly picked. Huh. I, all I can think of is the movie Grandma's Boy. Oh, yeah. That's like, where everyone's that, mind goes. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Like, dude, you play video games for, for a, a living. living. That's what you get paid to do. Yeah. Play video games. And it's surprising you don't how have to be good. people out there. Like, that is their goal in life. To be a tester. You to don't have to tester. be good at the game. You no. just have to play it. Well, no, you have to be decent. You have to be able to figure shit out so that way you can right. like, beat Not it and then go, to... okay, well, this was too easy. This was too hard. This didn't make sense. This blah, blah, blah. Whatever it's it is. It's like uh, uh, Magic the Gathering, the card game. Yes. To be considered on their pretty much their... It's, Universal. Well, they take a bunch of like former pros okay. and bring them in. Okay. So they jump off the pro tour and like they, they're a... Employee of Wizards of the Coast. They, like, set the curve, almost? Yeah, they okay. get to see, like, three or four sets in advance. Like, all right, so this is going to be, like, for 2021. This is going to be, like... This is insane to me. Yeah, and then they break out all the cards, and they go, all right, <laughs> tell me which card works, which card is broken. Like, if you combine these two cards, is there, like, some sort of, like, inf- like instant win? Right, blah, who blah. matches well against each other? Yeah, and oh then they go God, through, and they're crazy. like, all right, this one's really cool, but it's going to have to be, like nerfed like toned down because it's too strong because if this is going to be out with this card that's already on this set that came out like three months in advance they're not going to like that's going to be too much power like there's people out there and they get picked pretty much hand selected but they're usually pros or okay. they're well known in the community Been doing it who have enough. a knowledge that's okay. just like encyclopedia inside that spectrum mm-hmm. of a world where would you want to be mm. would you want to play like a Magic the Gathering style card game, or would you want to be a video game tester? If so, what style of game would you like to be involved in? I will. For video games, I've always been a fan of first-person shooters or driving games. I've always been really good at those. Um, I do think Magic, as much as it's frowned upon by people, mostly because they never played it, it is, and I've talked to Aaron about this, and he's the one that gave me this, he said it, and it, really fucked up my head but like all right chess right (laughs) yeah chess has been the benchmark for strategy games since it was invented right yeah i agree in his opinion and then him telling me why i think magic overtakes it because there's a constant rotation of cards there's different styles of play and that which limits what cards you can or cannot use. Well, that's fair because a chessboard only has so many pieces. Exactly. So you can like you can memorize like all right, the three turn win or the four turn win. This yeah. like you have a yeah. lot of reference to look back on. Right. But that if they're coming out with new styles of playing chess every fucking three to four months. Right. If they're adding more pieces, exactly. that have different and getting rid of older sets. pieces. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a constantly evolving game. And then they bring old pieces back, back as yeah. special edition with special powers exactly. and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. It, but I think it definitely takes a brain. It really you have to study, and then do your homework on like, all right, this card. It may look stupid, but how does it interact with this card? And it depends on or against that card. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it depends on what style of play you're playing. Like. If it's standard, which is like the last three or four sets mm-hmm. that are out, that you that's all you can use. All right, cool. Modern, which is pretty much almost anything. And then there's Legacy, which is all the cards you can use. It really affects everything else because, like, all right, that card's kind of stupid, but if you pair it with this other stupid card, it's now the most powerful combination in the game. Yeah. And you're like, well, fuck me. Okay, well, how, how do I build around that? Do you remember when you learned how to play Texas Hold'em? Yes. It, this is right on par with magic right. in my mind. So when I learned, I don't remember if it was Rounders or if it was one of the pro poker players said, but like when you're playing, it was right when Moneymaker came out. It was when we jumped in, yeah, and we seen Rounders right around the similar time. When you're playing Texas Hold'em mm-hmm. and it's a limit, it's a different beast. It's like shooting at a target. Yep. When you're playing no limit, it's like the target is moving around and shooting back. The way I've always looked at it was like no limit. I'm playing who's playing like the other players. Limit, 
You're playing the board? You're playing a more focused... Tunnel vision? Tunnel vision against okay. each one, because there's more restrictions. So, like, playing chess do. would be like playing Limit, where it's tunnel yeah. vision, and you only there have you a go. set amount, and then playing Magic would be, like, No, no limit, limit, where it's just chaos ensues, yes. and it, you know, the game fires back like at you. Because, like, when you're playing a No Limit, like, you know your style of play. Yeah. And after a, a little while of sitting hopefully. at the table, hopefully, <laughs> you know the other player's style of play. Hopefully. Yeah. And you have more maneuverability, more room to spread out. Whereas limit, you can only go the pot limit. Yeah. So you have to work at building those pots. Playing more those. the hand than you are the player. Yeah. you got to be know? more strategic with it. Yeah. At your picking your moments, whereas no limit, your strategy falls on like, all right, how am I going to convince this other player to lose his money to me? It more falls on the moment. Exactly. Because you could go all in at that moment. That could be your moment. It's like he may try game. to bluff at the right time for you. Yep. Or exactly. Okay. Huh. It's a weird, weird future, in my opinion. As we circle back to uh, right the online gaming aspect. I kind of hope poker comes back a little better than it. I think it, it will a bit, but it's going to take... Uh, Another money maker? Not so much the money maker. Or like a Jamie Gold it's per- so attitude or like all right, remember when full tilt poker and poker stars oh, and you had shit, all yeah. these different sites you could go on everywhere and play. Mm-hmm. And then once the federal government was like, no, nah, no, nah, we can't regulate that, so it's now uh, illegal for online gambling. Once it becomes legal again, much like marijuana has slowly started becoming legal in different states, right? Once it comes across the board, it'll boom again in a heartbeat. I hope so. I hope so too, because it's. The no. charity rooms are basically gone. Yeah, and I that's mean, they've main, cracked down on those so hard. Because of the our casinos. State. Right. Because the casinos are like, these charity rooms are taking our money. Yeah. So. Because, you know, casinos need more money. Then, funny <laughs> enough, legislation changes. And, you know. mm-hmm. Anyway, but, uh, like, do you remember when we first started playing? Oh, yeah. What is the longest you've ever played? <laughs> I'm going to say it was probably. How many days have you stayed up in a row to play? On oh, online. online? Online, in person, whatever. Uh, online, it was probably a day and a half. In person, I think it was that tournament I took second at Greek Town. You were with me. Yep. It was maybe 10 hours 10 we were hours, at the yeah. casino total. But online, a day and a half. Yeah. Online, I've done like a day and a half. Yeah. I won a tournament. I took second. I was very proud of. Uh, in $10 person, tournament too. I stayed up 48 hours. We played throughout a night. Cash game. Friday night, cash yeah. game. Uh well, it went from a tournament to a cash game at somebody's house. Uh, then went, stayed up, went to a University of Michigan football game Saturday morning. <laughs> Came back from that, and then we played again throughout the night to the next day. Then I went home and slept most of Sunday. Mm-hmm. Like I remember, like it is the most mentally draining game you can play, in my opinion. Poker? Poker. More than Magic? More than Magic. Yeah. But Magic is the only, it's a far second place, but it's the only other game that has... Compares a little bit. Compares to where you get that emotional drain where you feel like you did something. Yeah. Like, somebody could be like, I ran, like, 3,000 steps today up and down a fucking flight of stairs. Yeah, that's going to kick your ass. (sighs) No Limit Hold'em is my mental equivalent of fucking working Especially a tournament. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because there's so many people coming in and out that you have to adjust to. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, fucking, I miss that mental draining feeling. I your body's too. perfectly fine, but your brain is just done. Just chips and cards oh. and odds and cards and chips. And, and just, somebody's like, oh, tell me about a big hand. And you're like, I right. I'll tell you about one I lost. Ooh. Oh, you can, <laughs> That's the beauty. You can tell every bad beat. Everybody's got a fish story. Yep. <laughs> but you tell that time that you fucking sucked out on something. You know, yeah, it, it happened. I don't remember what the fucking nope. hand was. but I just remember stacking <laughs> my chips. I'm looking forward to uh, starting back up playing poker. That's one of Me my too. that's one of my 2019 uh, New Year's resolutions is yeah. to start playing poker. Like I'm looking I, forward like to the I tournament. Used to. Yeah, yeah, the tournament's gonna be fun. I think so. If we can get some people to turn up, it'll be. I cool. think they will. I mean, much like it usually does, life happens and mm-hmm. people trickle off and come back. But what I'm worried about is being so rusty. Like, if you played you from 2014. In a heads-up game, who do you think would win? The 2018 version of John or the 2014 version of John? Me, personally, I'd take me now. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Just because I think about things more than I did okay. back then. 
especially poker. Back then it was all just, you know, <laughs> yeah. give me my cards, let's go. What hand are we? <clears throat> now I see a big picture when it comes to poker. I just don't have the funds to play it on an everyday basis like I'd like to. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the ability to, like, do do. Like, all right, I can't go to the casino every day. I can't. I have money, right? Yeah. The funds, that's yeah. it. That's all but boils down to. even if you had the to. funds, would you go to the casinos every day? Fuck yes, I would. Yeah. I would make that my nine to five every day if I could afford it. It's interesting. And the thing is, you'd only have to afford it one day. Because if you're well, good at it, that would afford you. You would have to you. have a bankroll and, like, there's. Because, all right, you wouldn't have. Because <laughs> back in our heyday, Aaron broke this down much like he does anything he gets into. Right. It was like, all right, I need to make this much a month to get health insurance. I need to make this month a month to be profitable. I need to make this much a month to continue at this level. I need to make this much a month to go on to the next level. Right. And, like, he broke it all down. And I was like, health insurance? He's yeah. like, that's going to be my job, so I'm going to need insurance. And I was like, huh, I've uh, never thought about that. It's like, all right, you got, you know, place to live, car payment car insurance, grocery. Like, he broke everything down. And I was just like, huh. And he's like, this is how much a week I would have to win. This is how much a night I would have to win. I was like, you're fucking crazy. Yeah, I think to think like that, as far as poker would be, you know, you'd already have to be so far ahead of the game. I think so, too. You know, like, you You couldn't go into it like, I have to make X amount of dollars a month. It would just be like... Yeah, you couldn't be like, I don't have a bankroll. Yeah. I'm going to start doing this next Tuesday, so what do I need? No, yeah. you had to be like, all right, I got three grand saved up. That can get me to the March. one, one, two tables right. for two months tops. As long as I only play two buy-ins, this, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, why are you thinking so much? Because I want to do this for a fucking living. That's why I want to do it. <laughs> and it's like, all right, what was the last project or idea you had where you felt that wholehearted to where you were willing to make, like, all right, this is what we got to do. This is bam, 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 bam. You me personally? With, yeah. This podcast. <laughs> For me too. <laughs> the one before that was a comic book. But I've thought about poker many a times. I still miss it. It was I, I, some of the best times I've ever had. And I think if I could scrape it together. It was gratifying. Yeah, like a $200 bankroll and go down and sit and play one, two at the casino for an hour. Yeah. Just an hour, see where I'm at. Yeah. You know, if I'm still in the green, cool. Okay, let's go another hour. But, but then it remember. also depends on what limit you're playing. Because then that attracts different people. The yeah, usually one, get, two is yeah. where I'm sitting. Yeah. You know. But I was talking to a guy I work with, and he was like, all right, yeah, I go down. I was like, how much you lose? He's like, 400. <laughs> there. The next weekend, like, he came back, and he's like, I went down again. I was like, how much do you win? He looked at me, and he's like, 800. I was like, all right, you're even. He was like, no, I'm up 800. I was like, no, last weekend you lost four, so you're even. He's like, shit, I didn't think of it that way. I was like, yeah at the level you're playing and I broke it down to him and he's like did you play? I was like back in like 2012 yeah right. <laughs> we had our moments <laughs> yeah I was like what you need to do if you want to be blah 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 is bump up a level because then you get rid of all the people that just sit down with a hundred bucks and go all in every hand and he's like yeah I was like but you need this much to sit down and this much cushion so you mm-hmm. can keep coming back he's been doing good he's not winning a whole lot but he's up versus being down and it's like I can still coach fucking people and I've been out of the game for fucking five years. That's the thing. It's, I, I think it's easier to coach people because you're not sitting there doing it yeah, yourself. Yeah, you're not under you the know? pressure. Right. You're not in the moment. Like even with, I've, uh, I've taught a couple people how to play Texas Hold'em, you know, and, and, and they've went on, well, at least one of them's one of them, to play yeah. fucking good poker, you know. And considering, like, we're, yeah, like, I've sat down and played with that person. And knowing that person in real life and not knowing what they, mm-hmm. and sitting down and listening to them, it's like, Holy shit, look at you. You playing poker now. I'm so proud. Like Wearing your three-back clothing. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Like, that was shocking to me. Mm-hmm. Going from when I known him, or yet yeah, known, when I knew him and worked with him. And Every day. Who he was. Yeah, playing for pennies. And then you and Aaron <clears throat> telling me, like, yeah, this kid's legit. And I'm like, fuck you. Tell me what, the, yeah. Yeah, this kid's legit. We created a monster, that's And then for we sure. sit down at a fucking table. And watching this kid play it, I'm like, look at him go. Look at him go. He's, He's doing by the fucking book. Bluffing. Look at him Verse go. by fucking verse. Mm-hmm. He knows this by heart. Look at this fucking kid. I, I will say, um, I'd like to go out and play in the World Series of Poker. One time. Doesn't Just matter. Once. It doesn't matter what event. It doesn't have to be the main event. It could be no. a lower event. 
As long as it's a Texas Hold'em event, yeah, I'm good. Limit or no limit? N- um, preferably I'm, no limit. Preferably that, no limit. Limit scares me. <laughs> I don't know it. And the other games, I don't know at all. Yeah. You know, except maybe seven card, but yeah, whatever. It's still a different beast. Uh, uh, sometimes I'll think about that, like playing, you know, in the World Series mm-hmm. of Poker and winning an event and how cool it must be. Oh, it'd be amazing, you know? considering how many people enter. I think it would be really, really cool, like a bucket list thing to get a bracelet. That would be fucking sweet. I wouldn't wear it all the time, you know. I'd show it off. It would be prominent in my... I'd wear it next year when I go to Vegas for the same event. I wouldn't wear it to start off. Well, maybe. I would. Just as an intimidation factor. Fuck yeah. Yeah, because then, like, the people that are randomly... Smack your hand down on the table. (laughs) What was that commercial, the fucking uh, full tilt head that... It was like uh was it letterer or letterer something? Or, or, I uh no Helmuth had like no, no, it nine wasn't of Helmuth. them. It was uh Howard Letterer was at a table talking about like, yeah, I've got so many bracelets. And then uh who Johnny Chan? Johnny Chan beat in rounders. Oh uh to get a second one is Seidel. Eric Seidel yeah, 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 is yeah. dealing and he's like shh shh because like all <laughs> six of his bracelets are hitting together. Sorry guys. Oh sorry. <laughs> how, how many bracelets are you talking about over there, Howard? How you won your third? Yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> as yeah. far as New Year's resolutions, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one I'm going to go with this year. Well, that's tough because the World Series starts early in the year. I think it's the end of May. Yeah, that's still pretty fucking early. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not going this year. Oh. Not unless I got a money backer because I'm not going to have the funds. You know, getting in the tournament is one thing. Flying to Vegas. And getting a hotel. Staying in a hotel room for three, four days. Yeah. Our know. Our friend... I mean, this will be his third trip. Wouldn't yeah, it? yep. He's cashed both times before. He's gotten better both times. Yep. Which and is again awesome for him, but just mind blowing mm-hmm. from knowing him before his poker. Especially when he comes and plays with us in home games. We're and like, knowing, yeah. Get out but of here I think with that's that. more of a trust thing in his mind versus us. How we can beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't lost to him. That's we'll all see. I'm saying. We'll see. I don't want to get cocky and be like, well, if he's doing this good and I can beat his ass, I can fucking go out there and fucking Like do pool that hall good. junkies? Yeah. <laughs> just bankroll myself and go pro. I'm going. I'm, I'm just going to get on the road yeah. and see where it takes me. Oh. Would be cool to go to, like, New York and play in some underground poker room. Yeah, no. You know? Only because then you're in New York. There's too many people out there for me. Yeah. You know, as long as you just win your money, get your money, and go, there's no issues. That'd True. be cool, but... I wouldn't want the issues. <laughs> I would not want the issues at all. No. Not at all. I would much rather go to fucking Vegas and just play fucking uh, side games. I would like to play in a World Series event. Just once. Just once. Just one time. Just to see. Just to be out there and be yeah. like, I was in this event. You know, keep your little check-in then, ticket. And- yeah. But then I would feel kind of bad, though, if I did bad, because I'm like, all right. Say there's 10,000 entries. Like, how many of them were just random people? Like, I played poker before. I want to go play. Probably sixty percent of them. Yeah, you it's know, like, unless like that was the cool thing I'd feel too. Like I've beaten pros. I still got my shirt. Yeah, says I be- I busted a pro in a tournament. I busted three pros. Yeah. in tournaments, and they weren't like that early was a on. cool thing. It was an awesome thing to do. Yep. You know, like he thought so little of me <laughs> that I was able to fucking outmaneuver him. I was just an avatar to him. But then you're thinking like he probably got paid. To play that game. Oh yeah, yeah. So he wasn't even giving a shit. Yeah, no buy-in. No, he he his buy-in was covered, and then he played. He I, or she played. I've I've beaten, I've won against a pro three times, but it was only been two different pros. Mm-hmm. One I beat twice, which I was, yeah, so high up on. But to think that they weren't giving a shit playing that tournament it was probably like contract obligation. That I miss more than playing live. I, I do, do miss too. playing online more because you can do it right now. Four More table. than one, yeah. Oh, fuck God. yeah, you could have a cash table and three tournaments going at the same time. Three tournaments, er, three go. cash games and one tournament. Yeah, you could fuck do oh, yeah. so much. And how much time you've like, it wasn't even a problem to four table. No. And how like your mind just quickly like, oh, this guy, he's doing this. Oh, that guy in that table, he's doing that. Oh, this guy. Yeah. Just how your brain was firing. I missed that feeling. I tried that feeling. <laughs> I didn't win enough to keep going with it, but. I do remember playing, like, yeah. I was multitasking three tournaments in poker and then playing video games at the same time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Got my computer over here, you know, cigarettes and ashtray over here, yeah. and I'm just going. You that know, was I, one of the biggest things was, like, how many packs of cigarettes I would go through while playing online. 
Especially if you're in a big tournament. Oh. Like, you don't want to check out for oh. that five-minute break. Fuck no. Because you ain't going to be back in time. No. You got to prepare for that shit. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to getting back into poker. I am, too. I, I think... I, I want to make that point. Our little tournament, I think, is going to be a fun little thing. Yeah. And hopefully, get back to where we were when we were playing a lot. You know? Oh, God. Speaking of the future, before we get out of here for the evening... Mm-hmm. um. For season two, we want to say a special thank you to all the listeners that have been around since season one and that are going to go forward with us. Mm-hmm. We encourage you to uh, share this with your friends. Let if them you decide. enjoy us, hey, give us a share. Yeah. If we, you don't enjoy us, somebody else might. They might. You don't know. We and just you might be, be that guy who introduced us. Their cup of tea. Who knows? There you go. Um, for example, uh, Mr. Tony Vasek. Yeah. Been on our show a few times. The award, the Lampy Award winning. For best story. Tony Fasic. Uh He has a friend at work. When he was over, Tony told us about a puzzle that we were gifted yes. from said friend at work, Mr. Eddie. And we want to thank you, Eddie, because the puzzle was delivered. And we are looking forward to putting the thousand pieces together. Of the different Michigan beers. Different Michigan breweries. craft breweries. And we're going to... Uh, we're going to do the whole super glue the puzzle together and yep. frame it up, put it up in the studio here somewhere. Very cool gift, and we appreciate it. We thank say you very much. thank you to you, Eddie. We appreciate the thought. That was very nice of you. Hopefully, in return, we'll bring you some funny content over the course of the yeah. next however long you listen. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, I think it's about time we bid adieu. I agree. Episode 55 is in the books. Season 2 has begun. Bam. The Christmas movie bracket, half bracket. Half bracket. The, half the mini bracket. bracket. The mini bracket. There we go. The That's stocking how we'll put stuffer. It. That stocking stuffer. I like it. <laughs> I like it. That's what we're going to call that right there. And um, that's available now, running now. Surprise. Merry Christmas. Gotcha. That's what we did for you. Please Listeners, vote. Please vote, share, Get tell it. your friends. Yeah, because this is a big one. This, it's this Christmas is be movies. interesting. I mean, come on. You grew up. You have a favorite. Hopefully it's on our list. The thing about the other brackets we did with the full 64 mm. is some of them were, uh, Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, this kind of starts out with, like, heavy hitters versus heavy hitters. This yeah. is, like, round two, round three stuff. We get right into it with yeah. this one. So it's going to be fun just to do for Christmas. I think so. Know? So go vote on that, please. Facebook, Twitter. Give it a like. Give it a share. Patreon. Tell your friends. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they vote for the same movie you do. Our next bracket. The next one we do will come in either February or March mm. of 2019, and it will be the perf- best professional wrestler. Ooh. That's how we're going to start off, because March is WrestleMania. Okay. So it kind of ties in a little bit with that. We have to narrow down our list, because there I, is... I think there's enough to get a decent list together. Oh, there's enough. Oh, come oh on. yeah, there's enough. There will be no uh, year... Time limit for this, right? No okay. restrictions, so you could have somebody from way back in wrestling against to somebody from you know the Miz <laughs> from the real world. <laughs> <clears throat> Kudos to the Miz, you made it, buddy. Woo woo, living the dream. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, we want to thank everybody for sticking around. Thank you for sticking with us to season two. Yes, it's gonna be fun. I think so. Mark it down, folks. Twenty nineteen. We got big plans for you. CHC takeover. Uh, big thank you, real quick, before we get out here, to my ma. For Those were awesome. Shot glasses with the bullet. Yeah. That's sweet, That man. was so cool. She surprised us on Thanksgiving with those. Pulled them out of your anniversary. Yeah. 308 bullet lodged inside of a shot glass. Very cool. CHC etched on the front. It's awesome. Good stuff. Thanks, Aunt Banana. <laughs> <laughs> so, until next week, sir, it's been fun. As always. <laughs>